Greetings and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. On February 14 of every year, many people around the world are participating in the celebration or observance of what is called St. Valentine's Day. And they would exchange gifts to their lovers or girlfriends or the persons of the opposite sex and they might send cards to each other and they don't give it actually a second thought as to where those origins might have come from. But if you go back into history, you will find that St. Valentine's Day has a very interesting beginning. Now, the commonly accepted story, which those might accept to have done a little bit superficial research, that there was a Catholic bishop with the name of Valentine who passed gifts on to others, is in the opinion of most researchers and historians a nice fairy tale and fabrication. There was never ever a Catholic bishop with the name of Valentine who did do those things on February 14 as it is being commonly explained today. But going back into history we find that the ancient Romans had a festivity which was called Lupercalia. And this was a festivity to honor a pagan god with the name of Lupercus. And the legend has it that Lupercus goes back to a mighty hunter who actually protected the Roman citizens from wolves so that the wolves wouldn't get into the city and kill young children. Now, of course, the name Lupercus is derived from the Latin name Lupus for wolf. And at the same time, those Lupercalia festivities which were celebrated on February 14, sometimes beginning on February 13, also honored a female goddess, Juno Febrata. And to honor her, the names of young men and young women were placed on a paper into a box, and then those papers were drawn, and whatever match came out of it, that particular couple was supposed to live together for a year. If you have thought that the concept that young people can live together today without being married is a modern invention. Here you have ancient Romans doing the same thing, and of course other ancient civilizations did it also. Didn't make it right though, and doesn't make it right today. But when it comes to Valentine's Day and its origins, actually the real origins go still further back into history. And actually they seem to have started with a famous figure from the Bible. His name was Nimrod. And he is described in the Bible as a mighty hunter. And legend has it that he was the one who actually protected citizens who were living in cities from wild animals. His birthday originally was celebrated on February 14, beginning sometimes with the evening of February 13 and sometimes stretching to February 15. And his mother, who also later would become his lover, was none other than the famous person Semiramis. And the Bible tells us that gods like Baal or Semiramis and others were worshipped. And of course, if you know just a little bit about the Bible, you just know how despicable that worship was in the eyes of God. And tradition has it that Baal was none other than Nimrod. And the concept is that Baal then later turned into the Roman god of Lupercus. And Semiramis, of course, turned into the goddess of Juno Febrata. The question still remains, how did those pagan rites enter the celebration of Valentine's Day? The answer is rather simple. The Catholic Church adopted the concept that rather than eradicate pagan customs, we should use them, bring them into the fold of Christianity by placing a Christian mantle upon them and thereby making Christianity more attractive for the pagans. And that's exactly what happened, not just only in the case of Valentine's Day. Many other days which are being celebrated today have the same origin and the same history. And so saints were invented. Rather than having a name or a person with the name of Valentine, who allegedly was a Catholic bishop, they just took the concept of Lupercus and changed the name into Valentine. Now, Valentine was a common name in 
amongst the Romans, and also there is evidence to the effect that there was a pagan god with the name of Vail, V-A-L. And so the bridge was crossed, and now we have today Valentine's Day, but it's pagan all over. I mean, the paganism is written all over the celebration of Valentine's Day, and God tells us that we shouldn't worship him in any way by adopting the customs of the pagans as to how they worship their gods. God does not accept that kind of worship. And whether we quote-unquote worship God on the Valentine's Day celebrations or not, we somehow are associated with the worship or the observance of a quote-unquote saint, Valentine's, who never existed, who is none other than Lupercus or in the long run Nimrod or Baal. You should know more about the customs of present civilizations and why we do what we do. For instance, Christmas is another example where you might be surprised to learn how many of the celebrations we are doing today on Christmas days are just pagan in origin. We have a booklet which we have written explaining all these things. It's entitled, Don't Keep Christmas. It might be a shocker to even read the title or hear the title, and it might be even more of a shocker when you read the booklet, but some have and have changed their lives as a consequence. I challenge you to check into this, and I hope that you will also do the same. Thanks for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.